Well, hello there, you're watching the Press Preview. A first look at what is on the front pages. Time to see then what is making the headlines with the political editors of the Daily Mirror and The Sun, Pippa Creera and Harry Cole. They are both in New York covering the Prime Minister's trip to the UN Climate Summit and they'll be with us from now until just before midnight. Nice and early for you two. I'll speak to you in just a moment. <laughs> uh, front pages then, let's start, shall we, with The Guardian. Carries warnings of a possible winter of discontent amid worries about the reliability of energy and food supplies. According to The Telegraph, energy companies are lobbying the government to scrap the price cap in order for them to stay in business. But The Times says dozens of energy firms will be left to collapse, with the government saying it won't bail them out. Financial Times leading with the business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, insisting there is no question of the lights going out this winter as the gas crisis intensifies. While The Express says the government has promised to protect people from crippling energy bills. Daily Star claims that supply issues mean we could run out of various kinds of meat within days. In other news, the Metro reporting on what it calls a sleepover massacre in which two children, their mother and their school friend, were killed in Derbyshire. It's the same stories you can see leading the sun. So let's get the uh, thoughts then of Pippa Kura and Harry Cole. We will delve deeply into the, uh, what the Prime Minister is expecting from his meeting with Joe Biden tomorrow a bit later. But first of all, the energy crisis here in the UK. Uh, the Guardian, Harry, prepare for a winter of discontent. The Business Secretary earlier in the Commons saying, you know, don't worry, uh, it's not going to be like the 1970s, the lights will stay on, there won't be a three-day week. That's not entirely encouraging, is it, as a place to start? Yes, when uh, when when a minister has to stand up in Parliament and say, "You don't worry," you know, it's not. We're not going back to the seventies. Your first instinct to think is, "Oh my gosh, it's that bad." If they're already soothing fears, the Prime Minister, since he's been here, it feels like he's slightly out of the action um, uh, over in New York, and he's coming up with sort of ever increasingly uh, strange metaphors to try to, to try to soothe fears about what's happening. He says it's like the, the global economy is waking up like Gulliver and he's being, the sky rope's pinging everywhere as, a, as the sort of beast of the global trade starts to pick up again post-COVID. Then he's saying it's like the great thaw after a frost, you know, has some issues. And he said it's like everyone's turned the kettle on after watching a TV programme. There's just going to be a bit of, a, bit of a, a bottleneck in the system. That's all very well, but, you know, that bottleneck, they, they, they're unable to say well, how long that's going to last. And it could be up to a few months, that they're, they're saying. Uh, and at the same time, uh, warnings coming up Downing Street and uh, the business department, they're not going to bail out failing companies just because their business models haven't stress tested the stuff. So a big fight with business coming. And at the end of the day, you know, people's bills are going up and they're going to see this, uh, these issues, these rises in gas prices reflected very quickly in their monthly payments. And that's when I think things are going to get very tricky for the government. Yes, despite the price cap, the prices will still go up. Daily Telegraph, um, from the point of view of the energy companies, uh, at least four small energy companies have already folded Pippa in recent weeks. Uh, Quasi Quarting in the Commons were still saying we must not return to the sort of, you know, anti-competitive market where there are a few big players. But that's what's going to end up happening, isn't it, if they don't fix this? Because if you have a cap on the price consumers will pay, um, but these companies are paying more, buying in stock effectively. Um, there's, there's a pinch point, isn't there? Yeah, and the suggestion is that, that, well, at the moment, there's 55 energy companies that operate in the UK domestic market, and the suggestion is that they could end up, as a result of this, just going down to 10, which obviously, you know, dramatically uh, hits the industry. And Quasi Quarteng has had meetings with energy suppliers over the last couple of days, and the Telegraph reports that repeatedly in those meetings, the energy providers have urged him to lift the price cap so that they can put up prices on consumers in order to afford the, um, you know, the increases in, in wholesale prices, which have gone up 80 percent since um, July. Now, the government has been quite clear and quasi quarting obviously said it in the Commons today, um, number 10 privately and, and other departments making it quite clear that their priority is going to be consumers. Um, of course, any... Um, they, they've said that the, the cap saves 15 million households, about £100, on their energy bills every year. And as you rightly say, Anna, the prices are due to go up anyway because they're reviewed every six months. On the 1st of October, it's going to add another, I think it's £130 or thereabouts, to um, to the average dual fuel energy energy bill. So the government's really going to resist 
um, ongoing pressure. They made it quite clear they, that the consumers come first and the businesses come second. Um, but, uh, you know, as Harry mentioned, it's not just obviously energy prices that are going up. There's all sorts of costs coming up uh, this winter, leading to this, this so-called winter of discontent. There's the universal credit cuts, which is going to affect six million families. Um, they're going to lose 20 pounds a week or a thousand pounds a year. Um, food prices are potentially going to go up because of uh, shortages and problems with supply chains. Um, and then, of course, there's a national, national insurance hike next year for many working people as well. So, you know, the government will be very will be very wary about an increased energy price on uh, on top of that when already there's a real sort of cost of living crisis that many people are facing and that could really damage uh, the Tories standing with voters. Yes, and uh, the Daily Telegraph uh, quoting the business secretary saying the government will not be bailing out failed companies, stressing there would be no rewards for failure or mismanagement for suppliers left vulnerable by failing to hedge sufficiently. So these are unhedged or effectively uninsured against rising wholesale prices, um, not buying in advance like some of the big boys, but uh, buying on the spot markets, which makes it extremely expensive for them. The Times going with the same effect, really. Dozens of energy firms will be left to collapse. Um, and I suppose the idea that the big boys, um, as he called them, would then have to pick up all these customers, while at the same time losing money because of the prices or getting support from the government to, to, to meet the difference, I guess, Harry. Yeah, I think the government think they're in a stronger position than it appears uh, on this. Obviously, they are under pressure to bail out companies and to provide incentives. I think there will be some, some help and assistance, but I don't think it will be any sort of anywhere near the scale that some people would hope it would be. Because the government basically believed that actually now it's not like the 1970s. We do actually have a pretty diverse um, uh, supply chain in terms of any diverse sources of energy from wind to gas to even, you know, we've been firing up some of the coal power stations, which Boris Johnson's here telling everyone else they've got to get rid of over the last uh, over the last few weeks. Um, they think they are in a, in a strong position. They do think that they'll be able to ride this out, but it might take a couple of weeks for the sort of kinks in the system to uh, to, to filter out, but there are there are other levers in the bailout uh, uh, that they can pull, including a deal done with Norway to try and produce more gas in the coming weeks, which they're hoping will um, take some of that pressure off the off the prices. Yes, and, and there's multiple issues to this story, as the, the Daily Star so helpfully points out. Uh, we'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, is their front page. Uh, and the idea is that gas prices is one part of this story. Um, a byproduct is carbon dioxide, which is used in all forms of, of food production, especially for meat, for chicken and pigs. And then there's the inflationary pressure of, of all of this, isn't there, Pippa? Yes, and it will be something that the government will be asked about repeatedly, I imagine, in the coming months if there are ongoing uh, supply chain issues with uh, when it comes to food. The, obviously, the gas, the gas price hike is a factor because of the impact, as you say, it's had on CO2, which is used to produce um, and to store chilled meat. But there's also the, the lorry driver shortage, the hornier shortage, shortage, which the government's trying to address. Part of that is about, well, frankly, lots of people don't really fancy the job anymore, but also obviously Brexit has an impact there because many drivers were European and either can't or don't want to travel to the United Kingdom now. Um, but clearly that then has a, a knock-on effect on how quickly, yeah, how quickly it, um, it, you can get food from depots to or producers to stores and appointing more appointing more uh, lorry drivers and, and paying them a higher wage, encouraging them into the industry will take time. Um, so, you know, there's, there's potentially going to be a problem in the run up to Christmas, which, of course, is not the time that anybody wants to have to do without their pigs in blankets. Absolutely, yes. Uh, one of the largest um, producers suggesting they'd have to cut chicken, um, chickens on the shelves by 10 percent, which would have an instant impact. Um, and the question, I suppose, stretches to your paper, The Sun, in fact, your article. Could we import that famous chlorinated chicken from America if only we had a trade deal, Harry? A bit of a segue, I suppose. Um, but what, what, has, what have we heard from the Prime Minister on the prospect of a trade deal ahead of this meeting with Joe Biden in the Oval Office tomorrow? Well, uh, Pippa and I came over on the RAF voyage with the Prime Minister on Sunday night, Monday morning, and uh, gave a bit of a grilling on all a wide range of subjects, you'd say, including, you know, what on earth is going on with this with this Brexit trade deal with uh, with the United States? Liz Truss, when she was Trade Secretary, was set a target of perhaps doing it by 2022. It's all gone very quiet since Biden took over. And for the first time, the Prime Minister actually admitted to us, to us quite candidly, actually, 
He said, look, Joe Biden's got bigger fish to fry at the moment. Sorry, not, uh, a lot of fish to fry at the moment, which sounds an awful lot like uh, a chilling warning given by Barack Obama in 2016 when he said that Britain would in fact be back of the queue for a trade deal. Now, it's not that America are doing trade deals left, right and centre with other countries. I think they're trying to negotiate one with Kenya at the same time. Um, it's the fact is that, you know, COVID obviously has blown things out of the water, the situation in Afghanistan, and Boris Johnson seems to be blaming uh, Joe Biden's sort of vast domestic infrastructure spending and building back better and things like that. But it feels very much like uh, progress has stalled. And I'm not sure that tomorrow's visit to the White House is going to do very much to get it going. So don't hold your breath on... Uh, on a vast US trade deal uh, anytime soon, stepping in to uh, ease some of these issues, because it feels to me like it's many years off yet. Yeah, we're going to have plenty more time to talk about this. There's so much to say, isn't there? As we look at the picture in the sun there of uh, the Prime Minister shaking the hand of the Brazilian president as he urged him to protect the, uh, the rainforest as part of the commitments to try and reduce CO2 and uh, COP26. But, uh, Pippa, you'll get your say on that a little bit later. Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Lots more still to come, including more from the States. Britain's soon able to travel to America without restrictions. Debating that just a moment. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, Pippa Carrera and Harry Cole, both in New York uh, with the Prime Minister, effectively. And uh, we were talking about his visit there. And a Billy Bonus, Pippa, I suppose, for him is this decision by America to um, lift the travel ban on Brits heading to the States. Yes, 18 months ago, Donald Trump, at the start of the pandemic, imposed a complete blanket ban on anybody coming um, from abroad uh, to the United States. And as a British citizen, it's been impossible if you've been in the UK for the previous 14 days to travel to the US. And uh, even, even if you um, had, uh, there were some exemptions if you worked here, if you're a US citizen as well, or a family of US citizen and, and other sort of few visa there's a few other sort of ways with few visas that you could do it, but it's basically impossible to come to the United States. And the announcement today um, from the White House basically confirms that if you're double japped and you're from abroad, then you will be allowed to come to uh, come to the US. So Harry and I travelled here. Obviously, we had a, a work exemption, but you know, from the beginning of November, anybody with a double jab um, will be able to travel over, which opens up all the you know the business that that has been uh, done remotely. Um, for the last 18 months, but also holidays for people if they fancy popping up to New York or to Disneyland or Florida. Um, the, it seems to be that um, the United States is going to accept any of the vaccines which are um, which have been uh, regarded as approved by the British regulators. For example, AstraZeneca, which obviously isn't really used in the United States, that will still count. So if you've had an EZ jab, you can come here. And the suggestion is as well that children who obviously in the UK haven't been double jabbed yet, or even jabbed in some cases, will be able to travel with their vaccinated parents. So that those sorts of details will have to be confirmed. But it's, uh, you know, Prime Minister, as you say, is very lucky. He was um, talking to us on the plane on the way over. And he made it quite clear that we shouldn't hold our breaths for this announcement coming anytime soon. Clearly, he was blindsided by the announcement. Um, number 10 claims that he was he was tipped off in advance, but it sounds like it was only a few a matter of minutes or maybe even hours in advance and, and certainly not before they travelled over. But uh, the bottom line is, is there will be very many people, some of the four, four million people who travel to the States every year um, pre-pandemic. Uh, there will be many people, especially those who are going to be reunited with family that they haven't seen for a very long time, who will be very happy tonight. Absolutely, they will. And as we look at the, uh, the Metro, Harry, which is um, a furious driver... Uh, cross at these M25 protesters, suggesting that I know what you're fighting for, but you're wrecking lives and making people hate you. The whole question about direct action. Um, worth bearing in mind that for the Prime Minister, I suppose, the focus has to be the COP26 uh, summit, doesn't it? And, and trying to get America to contribute to this $100 billion a year fund to help uh, emerging countries battle climate change. Yeah, I think the point I think a lot of people feel is that yeah, you can agree with some of the calls, you can agree with the with the noble aims, but the tactics are just going to annoy people, are just going to drive people away from your calls, and it's completely counterproductive. You've got a load of middle class lefties sitting in the middle of a motorway when people are trying to go to work in the middle of a supply chain, you know, crisis that's already existing. You just think 
it's going to be, you know, for, for what, what minuscule step forward you're going to achieve from this process, it's going to be you know, step back and step back and step back in bringing the public with you on this. And frankly, uh, you know, I think they deserve a little bit more than a, a ticking off from a van drive. Indeed so. He looked very cross in the picture, certainly. Um, both of you, lovely to have you on from the States. Thank you both very much indeed. Pippa Kura and Harry Cole, they're reporting from America ahead of that meeting with the Prime Minister.